of the Backyard Barbecue. <laughs> epic fall and epic success. Ooh. Jeff has been perfecting his grilling skills on his old school Weber charcoal grill. And he has some stories to share. This Let us welcome Jeff. Backyard barbecue. Quite a sense memory, isn't it? Think back to the 4th of July of your childhood. Can you smell that wonderful charcoal burning? And the, the burgers, the sizzling steak, the barbecue chicken. Can you see your father and your uncles in those ridiculous aprons and long forks, <laughs> swilling Budweiser and acting like they know what they were doing? <laughs> Do you remember how those burgers and maybe corn was some of the best tasting food of the summer? Well, I have very fond memories of those barbecues as well. But now as an adult, with all my experience, I also know that sometimes those barbecues can go very, very wrong. And that there's a right way and a wrong way to grill. Well, first let me give you an example of the wrong way. I was up in Portland last spring for my son's graduation from college. We all gathered at his ramshackle house there, very Portlandia, with his uh, five housemates and their family and friends. For a big barbecue. I was with the fathers on the upper deck by the grill for a dad off, <laughs> cooking the burgers and chickens and so forth on that gas grill. Now, and we were all jockeying for position and impressing each other with our knowledge, but I kept pretty quiet. I have experience with this Weber charcoal grill, but not with a gas grill. But this one guy that had sort of taken first position with the spatula, uh, you know, had taken charge, and I don't think he knew what he was doing. For one thing, he never closed the lid on the grill, which really helps the meat cook better. He was flipping the burgers incessantly, <laughs> and he wasn't watching what he was doing. He was, just, he was too busy flapping his jaws. And these were like really thick burgers, you know, from a local discount grocery store. Mm. How long had they been out from refrigeration? How had they been prepared? Well, I blame myself for not asking these questions. And also, I ate one of those big, pink, underdone burgers. Oh, my bad. Two days later, when I was five hours south at a national park, Five hours south of Portland, it hit me. Explosions from every orifice. <laughs> I have never been that sick. We think it was E. coli, which is that big bacterium that's found in the intestines of animals. You also find it on uh, undercooked meats and uh, unwashed vegetables. Yep. What could have been done to have prevented this? In other words, what are some tips for safe grilling? For one thing, don't trust backyard barbecues unless you know the chef and his work very well. And that goes for street vendors as well. Don't use the same platter and utensils for the uncooked meat as you do for the cooked meat. Keep cooked and uncooked separate. Don't marinate meat on your countertop. Marinate meat in the refrigerator. Wash your hands often. Keep hot foods hot and cold foods cold. Meat should not be out of refrigeration for more than two hours, and in the summer, if, it, if it's 90 degrees or more, for more than one hour. So those are some tips for safe uh, backyard barbecue. But to leave you on a positive note about things going right, I would like to share with you my favorite recipe for grilling whole chickens. It's called Captain A. Schmidt's Chicken, and you'll find it in the Seattle Times. First, go to Gelson's and get two broiler or roasting chickens, about two and a half to three pounds each. You're going to cook two. Why? Why not? You're going to all this trouble. It's nice to have extra food for guests or for leftovers. Next, wash the chickens. Leave them slightly moist. Take uh, a lemon and an onion, cube it, and stuff the cavities of the chicken. You can close the cavities with toothpicks and then truss up the legs with twine or with dental floss. Now the secret ingredient, Lowry's seasoned salt. Mm -hmm. Just douse the chickens with the salt. Just cake 
the, uh, the season salt on the chimney. Now you're going to need a really hot fire. So take one of those uh, charcoal chimneys, fill it to the room with charcoal, light it, let it cook for burn for 15 minutes, then dump it out on the grill and spread it on either side of the grill evenly, leaving the center of the grill clear because the chickens need indirect heat, uh, heat to cook. Take the chickens and put them on the grill head to head like this. Cover the chickens with lettuce leaves. Large lettuce leaves, iceberg lettuce works best. Cover the grill, let it cook for 40 minutes. At the end of 40 minutes, take the top off, remove the lettuce leaves, rotate the chicken 80 degrees, sorry, 180 degrees, now they're butt to butt. Put the cover back on, cook for 50 more minutes, then take the cover off, test the temperature of the chicken, then take the chicken off, let it rest for five minutes, and voila, that's just the best chicken you're ever gonna have. And the chicken should be what temperature when you test it? 100, 165 degrees. Oh, you know what, I never, I never told you that. When you use one of these, this is an instant meat thermometer. This happens to be a really good one. This is called uh, a thermopen. I'll pass it around. A bee should be uh, 145 degrees, roughly, you know, you can give or take that. Poultry 165 and uh, seafood 135. So, yes, chicken should be 165. If anyone would like a copy of that recipe, I'd, have, I'd be happy to provide it. Grill safely and grill often. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster.